Welcome to In It to Win It. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. We are here for Monday Market Moves, what happened last week in the markets and what we expect for next week. All right, coming up, we've got some guests. We have Jared Dillon, we have Matt Warder, and Chris Vermeulen next week. Jared Dillon is a bond expert along with portfolios. Uh, Matt Werder is a coal expert, and Chris Vermeulen is a chart master, uh, technical analysis. Put your questions in the comments below. Start it off with their first name, either Jared, Matt, or Dylan with a colon, and then put your question, and uh, we will ask them on the air. We're having them on next week, so three interviews lined up. News in the markets. Charlie Munger died. Warren Buffett's uh, friend and business partner, 99 years old, heck of a run. Rest in peace, sir. Uh, thoughts go out to Charlie's family and to Warren Buffett. And Jerome Powell put out a speech uh, yesterday. Well, I guess it'll be Friday. Uh, you guys will be watching this on Sunday. Uh, and he said, it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or to speculate on when policy might ease. So he tried to get the market uh, to hold their horses a little bit. And we will share our screen here with the S&P 500 starting out as always. And we will see that that, uh, that did not work. <laughs> the S&P 500 uh, shot up on that news, uh, closed the week at almost 4,600. We have a lot of uh, uh, support right around, I'd say 4,400. Uh, built up on the S&P 500. So we, we've said for the last couple of weeks that we expect this to stall out and roll over. It's taken a little longer than we thought. It may grind a little sideways here, but we fully expect this to uh, roll over and come back down. All right, moving on to the dollar. Uh, the dollar, we drew in, drew in this retracement right here. It kind of hit perfectly right on the bottom of that. Uh, so it's just bouncing in between 102, 103, right under the 200 day moving average. We will see how uh, this irons out, but kind of expect it to correct down a little bit for next week. Story of the week, gold uh, hit a new all time high. Now this is on monthly close, this is on weekly close, and this is on daily close uh, in the future markets on the AXU. Gold is at a new all-time high, and I got to say, it uh, we were way, way, way early getting into this, uh, probably two and a half or three years, uh, but it is good to see that it's finally breaking to the upside, and now that we've pierced that balloon, so the, recent, the, the levels before, we had the triple top that everyone watching this show knows about, uh, we had the, the convid run up, we had the war premium with Russia and Ukraine, then we had the bank failures uh, back in March, and now we've pierced it. It's kind of like piercing a soap bubble or piercing a balloon with a with a uh, with a pin. And uh, now that we've pierced that, there is no resistance above it. It's never been done before. So we will expect uh, RSI and MACD are pretty in the clouds here. Would kind of expect this to correct just a little bit back down. Uh, but now that we've hit new all time highs on all three of those closings. Uh, this is very, very, very good uh, for gold. Looking on the hourly and the 30 minute here, it is pretty stretched in both of those. Uh, so I would expect gold to uh, kind of correct down a little bit, but uh, don't let this discourage you. You know, as far as like, if you're coming to this show for the first time because you see that gold hit the news, uh, I don't know that I would just jump in all just yet, but uh, this, cup and handle pattern is essentially broken and we believe that our upside here in the next six months to a year or so is probably going to be 24 2500 dollar gold so very very encouraging for gold uh amazing <laughs> it's finally happening so this is great uh okay we closed our position like we had uh, hinted about last week in sandstorm royalties uh, it closed it with about, I think, an eight or, or seven or eight percent uh, gain. Just wanted to get out of this one after talking with Rick Rule. Uh, it looks like we were slightly premature, but if your reason goes away for owning the thing, then uh, just dump your position regardless of whether you're up and down. One that's looking encouraging here, Gold Royalty Corporation. So we started dollar, well, dollar cost averaging isn't quite right. We're essentially buying every 10 cents on the way down from two dollars. 
And uh, our last purchase was at $1.30. We did have a limit order in for $120, but, and it got down to $119, but it never hit because it, it, was, it was so quick our order didn't fill. But it's starting to round back up. It looks as though uh, it's bottom tier. So that is encouraging and uh, very excited for the proposition of Gold Royalty Corporation and what they hold for the next half a decade or so. They are forecast for some amazing earnings year over year. Cote comes online very soon in January. And with a rising gold market, this stock should do very, very, very well. Another royalty company, Origin Royalties, still got the same limit orders we got in here at 45. Then again, a limit order hit at 43. I'm sorry, 45. Then we got another one in for 43 and another one for 40. Hopefully they hit, spiked up with, uh, with gold. But hopefully we'll get a correction in gold and then these limit orders will hit. Silver. Oh, this is uh, amazing. Um, we, uh, uh, we passed 2550, which was a big uh, uh, resistance level, and we closed above that 2585 for the week. Next level of resistance we see is right around 2625, 2635, somewhere in that ballpark. We'll see if we can get up there. Getting stretched in the technicals here. Uh, but really good to see silver uh, uh, performing and, and, and lifting with gold here. Uh, trades that we had, SILJ, the Junior Silver Miners ETF. Uh, we took off the table essentially these purple arrow arrows trading account. We still have the blue arrows in our long-term bullish uh, thesis here for silver. This one should do quite well. Had we waited today, we would have made an extra, uh, I don't know, a few percent there or something. But uh, anyways, silver was getting pretty stretched, so we got out. Still having our core positions down here in SILJ. All right, moving on to copper, Dr. Copper. This is really encouraging. So this has happened in the last uh, a few days here. Kind of a downward trend line right here. I mean, everyone here can see this. Broke out to the upside. Um, so maybe a bullish pendant here i would like to ask uh, chris about this when we have him on the show next week not really sure if we can draw that in i'm curious to see what his thoughts are on this uh but copper's looking pretty good when we had peter granich on the show a few weeks ago we were down here at around 350 and he said that 450 was much more likely than 250 and it looks like peter is right Leveraging that on COPX, the Copper Miners ETF. Love this one a lot. This is going to be a long-term hold for uh, what will hopefully be the commodity super cycle and copper's run in that. Uh, just slowly scaling into this thing. Remember, we learned about copper way back here nine months ago. Just catching these little bottoms here. And hopefully this will perform something like uranium over the next uh, couple of years. And uh, we'll catch a bid with copper. Leveraging that on Arizona Metals, had a nice little turn up here, probably because copper is up. And uh, uh, yeah, starting to put in what may be a bottom. Uh, this looks to me kind of like a technical bottom. We'll see if that irons out to be correct or not. But starting to turn up in the technicals down here. Uh, I don't see a buying opportunity right now. Uh, but uh, like in the way uh, Arizona Metals is starting to round up here. Moving on to uranium, uh, according to John Quakes, uh, there's several different spot prices right now, depending on where you're mailing the stuff uh, and uh, who you're shipping it to. He said between $80.50 and $82. Uh, we got it here on the, on the chart at $81.40. I trust John Quakes more than I trust this. Uranium is continuing to perform like a boss, really stretched in the technicals here, but the fundamentals are just squeezing this out. Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, uh, we sold a little bit of our position here to put some limit orders in on coal, and we're going to pick Matt's brain a little more on coal uh, next week. And moving on to URA, oh, you know what, let me do a new share here, and I will pull up the uh, Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, close the week at a 3.12% discount to NAV, we added another 100,000 pounds of uranium. Love this. Uh, absolutely just a boss of a fund. Amazing foresight by the guys out at Sprott. Love this fund a lot. We have trimmed a little bit of our position. Not a whole heck of a lot. Just enough to start a position in coal. Uh, all right, moving on to URA. 
So uh, still kind of stretched right here. I mean, the technicals are uh, looking a bit stretched, looking like it might roll over a tiny bit. Um, as far as been getting a lot of questions on entry points into uranium and man, it was super easy when we had this horizontal trend line and essentially all we did was just buy around here. And now that we've started this upward channel trend line, the only buy opportunities that, that we see are pretty much anytime it hits this 50 moving average, this yellow line right here. Uh, so maybe when it corrects down to this uh, 50 again, that might be an entry point. We already have so much uranium that we're not really interested in buying and chasing green candles here. Uh, but if you're not in uranium yet, I would say those would probably be your entry points somewhere along this white trend line up. Also trimmed a little bit and went to cash some of our long term uh, uranium uh, positions over a year. So remember, if you buy this, ideally you want to hold it for over a year because then you only pay 15 percent taxes instead of 28 or 30 or whatever your going tax rate is on uh, short term. So the green arrows, we took profits. We took a little bit of profits in the blue arrows here as well. Haven't sold anything in the red arrow account. And it'll probably be the last to go simply because they're our latest purchases. Um, but uh, took a little bit of profits off the table and uh, basically moved that into treasuries. So we'll start collecting about 4%. Could be a little bit early, uh, but uh, I'd, I'd rather secure a little bit of uh, profits here. Again, we only sold about 10% of our total uranium. 90% of it is still on the table. And our next target upside is going to be $100 uranium. Uh, okay, Uranium Energy Corporation, uh, Steve, wa Steve W. Uh, said, uh, hey, I uh, reached the point of no concern on UEC, uh, took profits, it's only 5% of his uranium portfolio. Well done, sir. <laughs> well done, Steve. We could do the same thing here. We're holding on just a little bit more for this one, uh, although I could certainly see why you do it tapping on uh, uh, resistance right there. If we go out to the weekly uh, right here, not the all time highs, but uh, definitely getting stretched here. And notice how much more calm you are, Steve, now that you know that everything you have on the table is free and clear, right? Uh, you already paid your taxes. You got back your initial investment. Now you're in for the ride. We just think that uh, this one has a lot more to go simply because it's based out of America. And we believe that there's going to be a premium on um, uh, American uranium as opposed to anywhere else in the world. And uh, so we're holding on. Maybe that'll be a mistake. Maybe we should do the same thing. Although some of our last purchases are not within the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The And this is our biggest uh, purchase actually down here. So we can't really sell past the point of no concern, unless we start selling some of our shorter uh, duration positions, which we don't want to do. Uh, but anyhow, congratulations, Steve. Well done, sir. Uh, Dennison. All right, Dennison Mines. And this is coming from Saul. He wants us to look up uh, UEC, which we just did. And Dennison Mines, as far as an entry point, uh, don't really see an entry point in here. Let me go out to the weekly. Uh, you can see that red line is basically, there's a lot of uh, resistance right around where it is now. You can see how many times it's hit this over the last, what is that, 12 or 15 years. Uh, so wouldn't be surprised at all to see it correct back down. I don't see any entry points. We had a little pullback here where we basically doubled our position in Denison. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't really see an entry here into Denison. If you're past the point of no concern there, Saul, uh, maybe uh, this might be a neat uh, entry point, but uh, I, I'm sorry, a neat uh, exit point. Um, but uh, yeah, don't see any entry points right here now on Denison. Kind of the same thing. He wants to know about uh, next gen. Kind of still up in the clouds. Uh, you know, this is the life of it right here. Don't really see any entry points. I mean, it hit an all time high and then came back down. Um, you know, we want to see this consolidate down, hit some type of support down here. But when it's way up like that, uh, I'll bring it up in the daily here. It's going to be the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, it looks like RSI is starting to turn down. MACD is starting to turn down. A little bit of selling. Um, don't see any entry points in here. Although, you know, this is kind of like all the other uranium stocks. If you're looking for an entry point into this thing, probably around the 50-day uh, moving average. 
All right, moving on to Uranium Royalty Corporation. Love this one a lot. We keep drawing this. Uh, just uh, this nice little cup and handle formation right here. We still got a limit order in right down here around $2.50. We're thinking about upping that slightly, making it $2.60. That would line up with a couple of these bars let back here. Although if it does get down to $2.50, that'll probably hit the 400-day moving average. So I don't know, maybe we're splitting hairs over something that doesn't need to be. But the technicals are still a little high. I uh, want to see this correct down slightly uh, before we make another entry. All right, moving on to natural gas. Uh, possible setup here in, in uh, Devon Energy. Um, we see, okay, see that green line going across right there? Everyone can see that. Um, basically, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of uh, support built up kind of around where we're at right now. So if you don't have a position yet, we're about even in this. We did three equal purchases on each of these arrows that you see here. Um, maybe having a stink bid around here, around like 4250, somewhere in that ballpark might be a nice entry point. Equitable, another uh, um, uh, natural gas play recommendation from Rick Rule. Kind of obeying this 400 day moving average right here uh, about where we are now pays great dividends. I mean, we can see they just pay like clockwork. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want a position in uh, equitable, good dividend company, uh, we like Devon slightly more, but uh, not a terrible entry point in our opinion, you know, maybe a, a limit order right around here, like 39, and then another one down here around 38, right around the 200 moving average. But remember, these pay great dividends, so we don't want to, personally, we wouldn't be trading these, uh, but, uh, you know, possible entry point. All right, and then thank you to, I think it was Topper uh, pointed out Tell. Uh, we looked at this one back here, didn't really see any setup, uh, but uh, I went over this one with Daniel. We said we might actually trade this one, and we ended up doing that. We're up about 20% on the position, so we've essentially moved our, um, our stop sell order. This is not going to be a long-term hold for us. This will simply be a trade, just something to keep our monkey mind busy, I guess, and generate... Uh, a little cash flow uh, uh, during the month. And essentially, as this keeps going up, then uh, what we're going to do is, is we essentially scale um, that, uh, uh, that sell order up and up and up. So right now we've got the sell order, I believe it's 60 cents and the stop limit at 60 cents and then uh, 59, I think, somewhere in that range. And, uh, you know, if this shoots up, uh, then we'll simply move that uh, sell order up. If it comes down and closes us out, then we lock in a nice little gain and uh, move on. All right, and moving on to oil. Uh, crude oil has been pretty interesting over the last week or so. Kind of ground up and then fell back down. Closed the week at about $74 a barrel. Um, like in crude oil a lot, there is an off chance here that it goes back down to like 67 or maybe even hits like we did back here at 63. If it does, that is a tick you need to catch. Uh, but uh, uh, like an oil a lot over the next um, half a decade, you know, as much as our big thinkers want to uh, uh, stop oil production, um, they're not going to. Where you can play this, XLE, like this one a lot, um, maybe a limit order down here around like 8250, something like that. That would hopefully line up pretty well if oil got down into the uh, high 60s. Um, and Exxon, this is the way we've been playing it lately. We've had uh, limit orders in going on the way down. Our next limit order, uh, one hit at, uh, I think it was 10, oh, I can just click on this. Uh, what is it? 102.99, that's not right. Oh, I'm on that. And this, there. Uh, 101.84 is what we got it at. Next limit order is at 101. Um, so hopefully oil does correct down, we can get more and just collect our uh, uh, collect our dividends as we go. Uh, Blackstone Minerals still got the same uh, limit orders in. Might have a little bit of a retracement here. Uh, so we can see this, this Fibonacci retracement has been obeyed once already. Uh, wouldn't surprise us at all to see it come back down here about 1730 or 1720. That might be a neat, interesting uh, uh, limit order. Also be aware with this, like a lot of uh, companies like this is uh, whenever they pay a dividend so these blue dots down here are dividends look at what the share price has done it's just gone down 
Another one right here, look at the share price, gone down, right? Another one right here, gone down. So you can time your entries into this. They have to pull the money from somewhere, right? And they got to pay. And so the share price comes down. Uh, so you can either kind of get in maybe on this retracement or you can wait until the next dividend and uh, probably capture and essentially start the clock. Uh, I kind of like doing that unless I see a technical entry uh, like we did back here. But um, yeah, just a thought for Blackstone if you want to get into that. Another one here that I think is becoming more and more interesting is uranium is, this is uranium and how it compares to a barrel of crude oil. And uh, uranium is now more, a pound of uranium is now more expensive than a barrel of crude oil and it continues to go up. This just happened, uh, when was that? A uh, couple, uh, last week. So pretty cool, a uh, week before last. All right, moving on to coal. So this is what we sold our uranium for to put in some limit orders here on Glencore. Don't really wanna go chasing green candles right here. Would really love to see this correct back down to this yellow trend line up where this horizontal support line right over here. So we have a limit order in at $10.50, another one in for $9.50. Those could be pipe dreams, but odds are it will probably correct back down. We shall see. Thought I'd throw this one up as well. Bitcoin has been, uh, got a couple of questions on Bitcoin. It's doubled essentially in the last year. Uh, more than that actually and uh getting pretty stretched here so we can see the rsi in the daily if we bring it up on the weekly it's screaming in the clouds uh so wouldn't want to be placing any bets on bitcoin right here uh it kind of it, it follows more like a tech stock than uh than it really does anything else than an asset like gold uh but uh yeah getting a little lost in the clouds here wouldn't be placing any bets on bitcoin all right and random um uh, what do we call it? Uh, dividend companies. BHP, one of our favorites. So we've been in this for, I don't know, three years now. Amazing dividends. Don't see any entry points here on BHP. If anything, you might want to short it. Uh, but uh, yeah, would love to uh, get some more of this. Maybe it'll come down to the 200 moving average. Looks like, this is why I brought it up, looks like if this continues up, the 50 moving average is going to cross the 200, which will take, uh, create a golden cross but we're still getting pretty stretched in the technicals here. So not looking to place a bet right now. Uh, Rio Tinto, uh, you know, another one just like BHP, amazing dividends in the sectors we want to be in. Also getting a little stretched. Uh, so maybe that's why the questions came up on it. Also want to see this correct back down, although it looks like we are inevitable to get a golden cross here on the daily. Although the technicals are pretty stretched, would like to see this come back down uh, correct a little bit, even possibly just move sideways, let this uh, kind of iron out, and, uh, and then maybe we can uh, place a second bet. All right, and Dean wanted to know, he says, uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, enjoy very much your videos and saw that you follow Sabanye Stillwater. Stock has been beaten to a pulp. We'll bring it up right here. And uh, curious of your take on it. My portfolio is heavy stacked with uranium, gold, and silver. And I have a small position in Sabanya and considering adding. Thank you, Dean. Uh, okay, so we were in this uh, very briefly. Uh, I, I, I look back over my brokerage accounts to find our exact entry, because um, this is just me just putting uh, arrows on this uh, software when we make an entry. And I believe we got in somewhere around like here and sold it there. I think it was like an eight or 10% profit. I can't remember, but what made me sell it was basically this is a company that uh, has a large asset in South Africa. They're pulling out uh, PGM metals. They're having amazing issues right now with power and uh, labor issues, all the uh, political unrest that comes with South Africa. And, and honestly, I think if platinum and palladium do well, this company is going to do amazing and it's a great leverage bet on that. They do pay a pretty good uh, dividend. I'm not sure if it's sustainable, uh, but... Uh, <sighs> A little too risky for us, you know? So we may be missing a lot of alpha in this sector in platinum and palladium, but right now what we're doing is we're just choosing to hold the physical metals. If there is a hiccup in Russia, Zimbabwe, or South Africa, the physical metal that exists will do quite well. And, uh, you know, probably not as well as this company, assuming that they're still uh, uh, able to pull it out of the ground because they have electricity. 
Uh, but that was that was our take on it. As, as far as a technical entry, I kind of see what you're saying. It is getting pretty beat up. There is a decent amount of support on this uh, where it stands now. But I don't know, a couple times in history, it's gotten down here uh, to the uh, mid and low twos. Uh, that could be a real uh, uh, entry point. But what you're waiting on with this one is you're waiting to see if the uh, situation in South Africa gets better or not. And you're also waiting to see, uh, you know, uh, what what happens with uh, platinum and palladium. All right. Well, I hope you guys got something out of that. Uh, hit the uh, hit the like and subscribe, support the show, you know, share this with anyone that you think needs to hear it. It's probably your buddy that can't stop talking about tech stocks. You have yourself a great rest of the day and we will talk to you next time.